I just want to make two points. The first one is language. What fascinates me at the moment is that we haven't got adequate vocabulary to decide what we're talking about. Terms like democracy, human rights, poverty, struggle, imperialism are banded around, which had some perhaps preciser meaning 50 years ago, 80 years ago, maybe even 30 or 40 years ago, but actually don't say anything now in, in the year 2008. We need a 21st century vocabulary. One of the words that I think has to be Islamism, where I made that point very strongly, but it's fascinating that our own government is in denial about using the term Islamism and Islamist. The Home Office will not actually use this. I'm having an interesting conversation or correspondence with, in a very friendly way with Jackie Smith on this. I'm hoping to change her mind. But of course, David Cameron made his big intervention, forgive me, Andrew, a few months ago, which he said the word Islamist should not be used which, frankly, is to take Ed Hussein's book, or the title of Ed Hussein's book, and say, you don't exist. And I do think it's just intellectual nonsense, because if you don't actually define what we're talking about, not the faith of my 10,000 Muslim constituents in Rotherham, but the ideology of Islamism, then we have a very, very real difficulty of tackling it, because you can't confront an ideology unless you actually describe it accurately. It's not a problem across the channel in... France, I'd recommend for French readers two new books, as Gilles Coppel's uh, Martyr et Terreur, which is the most excoriating account of how, in Whitehall, in the 1990s, starting in the 1980s, right through our government, right up to 7 7, we simply were unable, as a political class, whether it's the permanent state of the civil service establishment, whether it's the media state, whether it's the transitory dispatch box and red box democratically elected states of Tory and Labour governments to tackle uh, this, this problem. I really do recommend, I hope it's translated very soon, the names here, the chapters and verse. I mean, I didn't know that Karadawi, for example, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, propagandist was now just here all the time, in effect, by the middle 1990s, had provided a theological justification for tearing up the deep Sunni Islam condemnation and prohibition on suicide. And all the Abrahamic faiths have this view that to commit suicide is the ultimate sin of despair. It is to destroy God's creation. Therefore, it is the most flagrant violation of, of God's will. And uh, the, the Shia, with the veneration of the martyr Ali, have a slightly different perspective on this, turning a suicide bomber into a martyr. But Karadar would just turn this upside down and said, there's no problem providing you kill yourself and kill a Jew at the same time in Israel. There's no problem now providing you kill yourself and you kill some harmless soldier of one of the democracies trying to stop Iraqis from killing each other. And Karadawi, of course, was allowed four times into London before 1997 by a certain Michael Howard, who one doesn't think of as being a liberal left Islamist Home Secretary, backed by his special advisor, one David Cameron. And we do actually need to get this discussion. We were just as bad. Sorry, this is, believe me, Andrew, this is, Michael, this is not making a part of the political point. But unless you're actually honest about the failures of vocabulary, you won't move forward. The second point I want to make, just very, very briefly, Alan Charlie, is this. That we have a European responsibility to lead on this. Almost all of the issues that are covered in, that, in this marvellous collection of um, discussion interviews, which actually we don't do enough of in Britain. You don't read the great interviews with people in our press anymore, the way I did as a kid when somebody like uh, Kenneth Harris, for example, would do a long adult discussion with someone, and you begin to understand where politics is coming from. They're reduced to ridiculous sort of 60-second interviews in, 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 in Metro or something. And this book is a really interesting uh, and fascinating uh, uh, book, 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 book to read. But I do think we have uh, interesting possibilities in Britain in raising this discussion to a European level. Because the European Union, with its Charter of Fundamental Rights now, is actually saying, here are universal human values by which we stand or fall, by which we define ourselves. Not everybody's going to be a perfect interpreter or follower of them. 
I think the time has come, for example, for a European Foundation for Democracy, funded by the EU, to take out uh, this message. I would like to see Ed Hussein's book translated into every language around the world and spread very widely. We can do it through a more soft power approach, perhaps than some of our American friends, but we should be very careful at sneering uh, at, at the uh, basic core American commitment to promoting democracy. I mean, I'm very glad that in the 1950s a Congress of Cultural Freedom was there to see off Stalinist interpretations of culture. I'm very glad that when Solidarność was going as a union, that European trade union and American trade union money was there to help, but particularly in its underground uh, days. So we should be very, very careful before we join the very easy sneers against American or North American, because I include Canada in that uh, democracy. Broadly speaking, you know what a democracy is, you know what a non-democracy is. And the final point I want to insist on very strongly, perhaps because I've just finished writing a book on this and Biden felt screaming at me to deliver the final manuscript. The new ideology of 21st century neo-antisemitism is hugely important. This is not about rabbis being beaten up or spat out horrible as it is. It is an organizing weapon of the new reaction. And Margaret Thatcher famously was in a car when a couple of her officials were talking about Europe and the values of the Enlightenment. And she said, Enlightenment, Enlightenment, why do we never hear of the Endarkenment? Uh, well, we are hearing of the Endarkenment today. Uh, we're seeing the slow erosion of democracy, uh, whether it's in countries like Russia, whether it's in countries like Venezuela, in its ultimate form, new ideology of Islamism. Uh, we're seeing it in the contempt the Chinese are showing for any demands for uh, respect for universal human uh, values. So we have to be quite clear that we search and make our friends amongst all pro-democracy forces and governments around the world, rather than snootily picking and choosing those that aren't. And we have to be quite clear in the need to find a new vocabulary to identify the enemies of democracy. That's another talk. We've had a much better presentation of it than I could ever do tonight. And I'm really, really sorry, Charlie, that I can't stay longer for this discussion. Thank you. Thank you.